Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, Think to Cursor, Audio Sync Made Simple, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the Sync to Cursor function to ensure that your audio is synced to the text in your transcript. I'm in a document that I've made to show you how Sync to Cursor works. On page one of this document, if I hit play, you see that I don't currently hear any words that correspond to my text, and that's because my audio does not currently sync. There are a few reasons why this might occur. You usually don't have to worry about something like this when you're working with your own real-time files and your own real-time audio. Common reasons that you might need to use Sync to Cursor would be if you obtained your audio from someone else, such as a videographer, or if you're using audio that your steno machine or handheld digital recorder recorded with your real-time notes that were written with Eclipse. There may be many other instances where you need to use Sync to Cursor, but those are some of the most common. If I look within this job and turn on my relative time codes, I can go to the bottom of the job, and I see that I had this real-time file open for 38 minutes. If I open my file manager and open Windows Explorer, I have a sync to cursor wave file here. And if I look at this file under the details tab, I see that it is only 33 minutes and 35 seconds long. Whereas again, my real time file itself was 38 minutes long. So the length of my wave file doesn't match the length of my real time file. And so that's a good indicator of why this audio might not sync. What I want to do in order to use Sync to Cursor is first find a place within my document that when I hit play, I hear identifiable audio that I know I wrote on my steno machine or with my voice mask and that I'll be able to find in my document. So I'm going to move down a few pages and I'll press play here from the beginning of line three on page four and I'll see what I hear. Assessed and found to be totaled by the insurance adjuster. Okay, so when I hit play on the word nothing here on page four, line three, assessed and found to be told. I heard audio that said assessed and found to be totaled. And so I can search for that text. So I'll type in all or part of the phrase that I heard. And here I see assessed and found to be totaled, which is the phrase that I heard when I press play. So now that I've found the text that matches the audio I previously played, Eclipse will be able to automatically synchronize using those two pieces of information. So what I'm going to do now, immediately that I've found this matching text, I'm going to go to my user settings, to my document tab, and I'm going to press time codes. And you see that right now I have the default time code offset of negative three seconds. This typically is enough to allow for the natural delay of speech and writing. However, when you're adjusting your audio syncing, this number will change, and that's what allows you to actually adjust the syncing. However, the sync to cursor function will make this adjustment automatically for you. Using the position of my cursor where I previously hit play, and using the position of my cursor now when I hit sync to cursor, Eclipse is automatically going to make an adjustment that should allow my audio to sync. And you see that as soon as I hit sync to cursor, my timecode offset was automatically adjusted. And so now I'm going to hit OK, and you wanna make sure that you press OK out of this window, don't hit the X. I'll press OK and OK. And if I return to page four, now with my cursor again on page four, line three, where it says nothing, I'm going to press play, and we'll see how the audio sync turned out. Nothing, ka. I didn't know what to do, Pirk. And you see that in this case, audio sync was right on. I don't need to make any adjustments. From this point, you do still have the option of manually adjusting your audio syncing in the document timecode setup window. If the audio was off by just a few words, you could adjust this section manually. I'm going to adjust it so that my audio no longer syncs. And if I hit play here, and what happened then? You see that it went a little bit too far back. And so in order to fix that, I can simply adjust the second setting within my timecode offset window. 
in order to account for that difference. Nothing, ka. Rather than having to use the sync to cursor button again. However, you can just use sync to cursor again. If there are small deviations, you can make the adjustment manually, or you can continue to use sync to cursor to adjust your audio. And you see that in this particular example, sync to cursor worked perfectly the first time. When used correctly, sync to cursor will generally sync your audio within a phrase or two. And at that point, it's easy to make small manual adjustments, or you can use sync to cursor again to get a finer tuned adjustment. Sync to cursor can be used any time in your document as long as you can hear some text you've transcribed when you hit play. Those are the only requirements. If when you hit play in your document, you don't hear any audio at all, just try hitting play from somewhere further down in your document. And as soon as you do hear audio, you should at that point be able to use sync to cursor as long as the audio you hear has been transcribed in the current document. Sync to cursor is incredibly easy to use as long as you can hit play from somewhere within your document and hear text that you've transcribed in the current document, you should be able to use sync to cursor to sync your audio. All you need to do is hit play, listen for the audio that you're hearing, find the text that matches the audio you heard and place your cursor on it, and then go to settings, document tab, time codes, and press sync to cursor. Your time code offset will automatically be adjusted and your text and audio should sync together automatically with the press of a single button. And again, just make sure after you hit sync to cursor to press OK out of the timecode setup window instead of pressing the X. If I make a change to the timecode setup window and press the X, that change doesn't get saved. And so make sure that whenever you're making changes to your timecode offset, that you press OK instead of the X. If you regularly obtain audio from videographers or from a handheld digital recorder, Sync to Cursor may turn into your new best friend. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it has helped demystify how Sync to Cursor works. Please don't forget that Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 7. Tech support can be reached anytime including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.